Extatosoma tiaratum, otherwise known as the giant prickly stick insect, is one of the easiest phasmids to care for. In this video, I will teach you all there is to know about their care so that you can give your stick insects the best life possible. Enclosures should be at least two times the length of the insect in width and three times the length of the insect in height. This ensures that the phasmid has plenty of room to successfully molt their exoskeletons. You can get away with smaller enclosures than the recommended size if you are extremely aware of when your stick insects are about to molt. If the stick insect is perched too low and touches the ground whilst molting, their fresh exoskeleton could dry abnormally and can result in deformities. This is why you have to be more observant if your phasmids are in smaller enclosures, and you must move any stick insects to higher ground if they are in a potentially dangerous position. To determine if your stick insect is about to molt, take a moment to observe this footage. In this footage, you will witness a stick insect that is simply breathing versus a stick insect that is having molting contractions. For more information on the molting process, check out this video, which will be in the description. Ideally, your stick insect enclosure should have at least one side made of mesh. This enables plenty of footing for molting stick insects as well as providing good airflow. Because Extatosoma tiaratum like to pretend to be eucalyptus leaves for camouflage, sometimes they don't feel comfortable moving around to eat if the leaves around them are also not moving. This is why having at least one mesh wall is recommended so that air currents are able to freely pass through their enclosure to move the leaves around. A very popular enclosure for phasmids are mesh enclosures like this one. I bought mine from the Mini Beast Wildlife Store. These enclosures are great because they provide very good airflow. But you have to be really careful when you open them up because if an insect gets caught in the zipper, it can get injured and may result in its death. To safely open the zipper, insert your fingers on the inside and run them along as you zip it open. Your fingers will push away any insects that are too close to the deadly zipper. If you are using a glass enclosure, your stick insects may have trouble climbing on the smooth sides, which can be hazardous. If Extatosoma tiaritum fall to the ground, they could potentially rupture their abdomen, especially if they are a heavy mature female full of eggs. To minimise this risk, add a rough surface on the glass sides to produce footholds for your insects. Fly screen, rough sandpaper and even cork bark can be used. For some phasmid enclosure inspiration, here's some photos submitted by some of you guys over on our Facebook page. Exotosoma tiaritum can eat a wide range of leaves, including eucalyptus leaves, bramble, rose, oak, silver wattle, hazel, guava, carajom, ornamental plum, hibiscus, and lily pilly. In saying that though, each stick insect has their own individual taste and may screw their nose up at food sources that are not eucalyptus leaves. I once tried feeding my stick insects lily pilly and only one insect enjoyed eating it. A stick insect that only ate eucalyptus leaves during their first insta stages has a higher chance of not liking other sources of food later on in life. So if you are planning on feeding your stick insects more than one different type of leaf, make sure to expose them to all of their food options when they are as young as possible. If you do use rose and bramble leaves, please be aware of the thorns that are found on the branches. These can potentially cause injuries to insects if they fall or if they are molting due to their softened exoskeletons. Branches should be harvested from healthy looking trees that are located in a habitat free of any chemical spraying or other pollution such as car fumes. Small leaves contain higher levels of eucalyptus oil, which can be harder for phasmids to digest, so the harvested branch should have a mixture of both young and old leaves. 
Each harvested branch should be given a thorough shake and drenching under water before being placed in the phasmid enclosure. This ensures that no other insects or harmful substances are on the leaves. The easiest way to do this is by holding the branch upside down under the running shower. For more information on potential hitchhikers on harvested branches, check out this video which will also be in the description. Back in 2019, I did a scientific experiment with my very first Exatosoma tiaritums, Ying and Yang. This experiment was about the eucalyptus preference of this species. Their preference was evaluated by how many frass they produced, the size of each individual frass, and how many times the phasbid left the branch to search for another food source. The results showed that Ecstatosoma tiaritum prefer thinner leafed species such as Eucalyptus lagothorans and dislikes the thicker leafed and ornamental type Eucalyptus such as Eucalyptus platypus. To ensure that your harvested branch remains fresh for a longer period, place the end of the branch into a jar of water. It is recommended to also put a piece of mesh over the jar opening so that no silly phasmids go into the water and drown. You can still place your branch into the jar by cutting a hole in the middle of the mesh lid. During hot days, one mist of water is recommended daily, but you can get away with misting every second day when it's winter. The branch should be replaced once a week or when the leaves become dry. During winter, the leaves take longer to dry out, so you may get away with changing the branch every two weeks. If you only have first insta giant prickly stick insects, it is recommended to not miss them as much as other insta levels. This is because newly hatched Ecstatosoma tiaritum sometimes just fill their little bellies up with the water and then they don't have enough room in their gut to eat the leaves to gain the nutrients that they require to grow. This can result in the first insta stick insects to die from lack of nutrients. Newly hatched insects can also find it difficult to eat mature eucalyptus leaves. Because of this, I recommend feeding newly hatched giant prickly stick insects bramble or rose leaves due to their softer texture. If you don't have access to bramble or rose, you can provide them with young tender eucalyptus leaves, or mature eucalyptus leaves with the sides cut to expose the tender insides. If you are housing your first instars with other levels, you don't have to worry about providing softer leaves because they will eat the leaves that the older stick insects have already chewed on. A female Ecstatosoma tiaritum does not need to breed with a male to reproduce, since she can fertilise herself parthenogenetically to produce female offspring. But she does need to breed with a male if you are wanting a mixture of both male and female offspring. Although it is very easy and simple to breed parthenogenetic Statosoma tiaritum, it does come with a cost. Self-fertilised individuals tend to be a weaker stock and do not live as long as sexually fertilised individuals. Parthenogenetic eggs also take twice as long to hatch. Eggs fertilised by a male will have an incubation period between 4-6 to six months, while eggs self-fertilised by a female will have an incubation period between 6-12 to 12 months. If you are wanting to breed your female Ecstatosoma tiaritum with a male, make sure that the male is available to her before she starts reproducing eggs parthenogenetically. Otherwise, she may continually reject his attempts at mating. Adult males will mate with adult females all year around. A single female Ecstatosoma tiaritum will lay up to 1,000 eggs during her lifespan. To lay her eggs, the female will stretch out her abdomen and quickly flick her eggs forward up to 2 metres away. For instructions on how to successfully incubate and hatch Ecstatosoma tiaritum eggs, check out this video. The link will be in the description. And that marks the end of this video. If you have any questions that were not answered in this video, be sure to write them down in the comments.